Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So stressful. The world's on fire. Good God. I can't look at this, guys. Like, my strategy is you buy it and you hope that you gotta get some money. Yeah, but we all think you're crazy. You don't fight this. No way. The markets are freaking out and you don't think that anything is wrong? I'll go back tomorrow and I'll lose it all. It should be fun. Good morning. Well, good afternoon. Unless, unless you're in California. Got about 45 seconds here before the uh, announcement gets put out there. So we'll just uh, see how it goes, eh? Straight. Oh gosh. So you're going to be like this. I got the ch stream transitions all screwed up. I'm sorry. You're going to get this twice now. That's so dumb. Eh. <laughs> oh, that's so dumb. I can't look at this, guys. Anticipation. Every once in a while. Oh, I'll explain it later. The markets are freaking out, and you don't think that anything is wrong? Go back tomorrow and I'll lose it all. It should be fun. Okay, no real reaction as of yet. The, the micros are just so illiquid at the moment. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's crazy. Oh, who in their right mind would trade micros right now? Good grief. All right. So there's no rate change. Um, statement uh, unanimously. <laughs> the Biden team is monitoring the situation, quote unquote, with GameStop. Okay, here's the... The, the thing, hold on a second. All right, here here is the change. So they have changed. Uh, let's see here. They added in the pace of the recovery in economic activity and employment. Um, used to say has continuously and it just says it has moderated. And they took out, but remain well below their levels at the beginning of the year, which is which is good. They removed that. And they said, recent months with weakness concentrated in sectors most adversely affected by the, the pandemic. Uh, the path of the economic recovery will depend significantly on the virus, including progress and vaccinations. They added that in there. Um... Nothing, nothing really significant in the change. So yeah, I'm going to say that the market shouldn't really be reacting too strongly to this. <clears throat> Good. How are you guys going? Do you see 20K or 40K next on Bitcoin? I would see 20K next. But you never know. Maybe Powell says something and Bitcoin just totally jumps up today in our bids in... Uh, in uh, you know gets filled I canceled them and i and i just added the one so but i don't think that's gonna get filled mm, let's see we're coming back up a little bit there gamestop at 328 right now it's still trading a lot of volume they are um 73 million shares so far i remember though that the other day that like they were kind of like subdued at this point, and then it was like going into the close, like crazy, you know, <laughs> scrambling. The Biden administration is monitoring the market wide short squeeze. Oh, they might do something, guys. Be careful. Biden's going to come and help his buddies? No, I don't think that'll happen. What are the, oh, I mean, come on, what are you going to do? This is freaking funny because it lo it sounds to me, I could be wrong, but it seems to me that the market-wide short squeeze is now a risk factor for the larger market because some of these funds will have to liquidate their money, which is just so crazy. 
You'd say hold, holding strong, right? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I, I feel like uh, I, I'd say if you're long, the, I don't really know the probability of if it's going to continue higher or not. But the per current action, and I can't see the, the depth of market or the order flow or anything, but just from the chart, they're able to hold this price. I'd say that's pretty good. And yes, many brokers were not, uh, many, many uh, retail traders going to be switching brokers soon, I think. <laughs> hey, Fidelity, if you want me to like, you know, push your thing, come and talk to me, we'll get some sort of affiliate thing set up. And do you think that today's red day is somehow connected to the short squeeze? I believe that it may be. Yes. That's kind of what I'm getting at. I believe that it could be. Swab went down for the first time in seven years? Really? They're that reliable, huh? Well, you know, it would be... the When we're at Goldman, um, the way that we did it was like, whatever the largest market event that has ever happened, and we would make sure that our systems would be able to handle double that. But I don't think that these retail traders or um, retail outfits um, make their systems quite as resilient. <laughs> Trading 212 down eTor. You see, you're doing all the ones. D Giro, that's one I've never heard about. I know you were joking, but Fidelity actually does have an affiliate program that you can just sign up to. Really? Way what? I mean, I I have to say, I, I don't think that their trading pl platform is all that great. Oh, look, refer a friend. Refer your friends and family. <clears throat> Tell us the names and email addresses of the people you'd like to refer. Oh, well, no, nah, I need uh, like a like a link. D Giro is a European broker. Well, you know, if you were having platform problems, you could just say, okay, you can't trade GME, and that would probably solve a lot of your problems. Oh, man. I do have, you know what's one that I don't, I don't push very often, but I am, like, super into. I, I here, I'll give it to you. Um, what is the link? I have to, I have to look it up here. Um... Oh my gosh, this thing is so great. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Is it just... I, I'm just making sure I get the... Uh... Mm -mm -mm. The URL correctly here. Oh, yeah. No, it doesn't work that way. What are you, how do you... Well, anyways, I don't know what the website is, but there's this thing called Yada. Have you heard of Yada? So it's a savings account, but instead of just giving you interest, because that would be boring, they give you lottery tickets. So based on how much money you have in the account, you get a new lottery ticket each week. You don't pay for it or anything like that. It's just like if you have, um, if you have $20 in there, then you get two tickets a week. And then... The tickets have like, um, I think it's like, oh yeah, they have a number for every day. And then at the end of every day, they draw a number. And <clears throat> based on how many numbers you get, you get a payout. And that's how they pay interest is basically they have it all set up to be the, you know, the probability of you winning with the tickets is, is equal to what you should get from interest. So for that, it's actually a little bit higher. So I have made more money. Like I just decided to try it out cause it sounded fun. And I put like, um, been putting $25 a month into it. Yeah. Didn't Graham Stephan buy a stake in that? Yes, he did. That's where I learned about it from anyways. Um, so I initially put $50 in there and I've made six. So like I've already made like a 20% return off of it. Right. And, and you get referrals. So I referred my mom on Sunday. So I, and that was my third referral. So I got 
300 bonus tickets. And then the 150 for her. So I've got this week, I've got like, uh, how many? 453 tickets this week. And it's great. And you go through it. Once you have some actual money in there, it's pretty cool. You see how many, you see the little blue circles are the ones that, that I'm, I've made stuff. Or actually a few more. So, so here I've got, I got a bunch. I've got a bunch that I could, you know, potentially be some, some winners, you know? So if you sign up for Yada, you try it out, use the code speculator Seth and both of us will get bonus tickets. You'll get bonus tickets. You get a hundred bonus tickets and I'll get bonus tickets. Do you know what the light speed futures platform looks like? I haven't used it. I would be willing to try it out. I always like trying out new platforms, although I, I'm kind of getting to the point now where it's like, man, there are so many different platforms and most of them don't really have anything all that special. Anyways, that, that was Yada and use the referral code speculator Seth and you can get like, like, I'm not kidding. When, when you get the 150 tickets, you think like, oh, it's just like 150 or it's like 10 bucks. They're like giving you 10 bucks guys. It's great stuff. You say it's good, no lag. I'm wondering, you know, I, um, when the market really gets moving, we get a little bit of lag, right? But I don't think that it is, I don't think that it's Ninja Trader or, or any of that. I think that it's rhythmic. I think that because I'm going through rhythmic trader pro here now, when I come into the preferences, you see, and performance, see, I have the current setting to be 10. And I think that that's supposed to be low. But it says, look, adjust to keep up with market data inflow. What if I, oh, maybe, what if I just turn that off? We'll just, we'll just turn that off. And maybe that'll keep it consistent for us. Hmm. Maybe that's my problem. So when it gets really gets going, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Can you make a video on passing methods or sharing data between two different indicators? Well, so my question would be, why not combine them into one indicator so that you have all of the information available from within one class? That, no, no offense, uh, how do you even say that name? Dehira? Dehiraj? But it sounds to me like you're trying to do something that you shouldn't have to do. It sounds like you're, you're probably making it more complicated than it needs to be. <clears throat> That's just like my, my base gut reading from your question. But you could just like, you have these two indicators, you could just like copy the code from the one and copy the code from the other and combine them in and have two data series there. Or you could make a third indicator that adds both of them in. I guess it would be, why would you need to do that? Unless they were like, how would you be passing data both ways between the two of them unless they both needed information from each other, then they would need to be in one indicator anyways. Unless it was just one is kept grabbing information from the other one, then you can just add an instance of the other indicator in the first one. And that's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Apple. Yeah, I think it's interesting also, by the way, you were talking about... Um, well, so today is not just the, the FOMC, right? FOMC is a big deal. But there's also Apple and Tesla earnings after the bell, right? That's huge, huge, huge. You didn't take any no trades after profitable morning. Good job, lad. Um, so I'm not really seeing the same kind of action that I did last time that Apple did earnings, wouldn't you say? I do see like what appears to me to be like forced liquidations of some sort, you know? like it's just like crazy selling and the futures are going all wild and then it just like floats back up and like it's over and like what the heck you know 
And then there's this whole thing that like the Biden administration is monitoring the situation. It's got to be like there are so many big guys that are in trouble here that it's a problem for the market. You know what I mean? Can you check BB? Sure. We'll check BB. Bam, 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 ba, bam. It's up huge. Blackberry's at 27. You know, Blackberry's been up big, but it's actually not quite as crazy as the other ones. Like, like when you think about GameStop and you realize that it more than doubled overnight and it doubled yesterday and it doubled the day, you know, that's how many days in a row can you double? That's insane. But Blackberry's up mm, 40%. Good morning, uh, afternoon, Winston. Winston's mom. It went up crazy today. There's a couple of uh, crazy crazies. <clears throat> I need to pull, you know what I need to, well, actually, I found a great website. You guys ever seen this? It's called Swaggy Stocks. Because there's stocks with swag, I guess. And we can go into real-time sentiment, I believe, right here. Oh, I don't want the, the... Oh, you can only do it on those who... No, no, it's ticker sentiment. Is it this one? Ah, here we go. And then you can see all of the ones that are that are big. Let's see. Do you think I can name all of them? Okay, that's AMC Theaters, Nokia, BlackBerry, GameStop, Spy spiders um peloton tesla um oh i know this one spc yeah i know what it is it's like not even close to what it's the symbol is uh okay so i i got one wrong i got one wrong oh that's right it's virgin galactic holdings <laughs> okay bbby is bed bath and beyond apple amd Oh, well, now we're getting into the ones I don't know. These ones, Kodak, CRSR. What's this? CRSR. Coast. Oh, really? That one is big out there, huh? Let's go. Let's look them up. I, I saw. I was. You know what's pissed me off? I'm here on Fidelity, and I get all of the notifications for like when there's new equity offerings. And I, I'm going through my email, and I'm like, well, dang, that's uh, Cosair, that's CRSR. That's, you know, like, I, I want in on that. Oh, man, they did good today. It's up 25%. Where did they start? Oh, they started way back there. Wait, it's been that long? Uh, that must have been... Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's like another new equity share. Anyways, so I'm like, oh, I'm, maybe I went in on that. So I like apply to get it, and they're like, oh, nope, sorry, you have to have a hundred thousand dollars. Why? Why? Why does it matter? I have a hundred. It's it's just stock as a stock. Oh, it makes it's, it's this whole thing. It's they don't want you in the markets. You know what I mean? Yada Savings App Review Prize Linked High Yield Account with Ten Million Weekly Lottery. It's so great. I got I got to tell you. If you haven't tried like like seriously, go to Yada. Like you go and find it on the App Store on Android or Apple App Store. Um sign up. Use the code speculator seth and then deposit $25 in there. And it's fun cuz it makes you think about like savings. And of course, you don't want to put stuff into like a 1% yield, but what you do need is you need like a a rainy day fund you know and that one you you don't want to be putting it into anything and so that's what it's really good for is you know have like a few grand in a rainy day fund and yada and and then you get to look at it every day and it, you know because it gives you notifications and tells you what your number is and stuff and it's fun it's fun it's fun i should go in and do a thing like every <laughs> what do we get today maybe if we started getting a ton of tickets and maybe like if i got close if i had one that was like just one away from getting them then maybe i would stream it but <laughs> anyways where were we spce i don't know any of these fubo i've i've that one i've heard before but i don't know what it is is that just Fubo, Fubo TV? 
or maybe let's check double check fubo stock yeah that's fubo tv i've never heard of that wish that's just the wish.com platform right i see it in Oh, the Global Clean Energy ETF is up. Uh, oh, no, it's only up 4.36. I wonder why that one is uh, such a big deal. SNDL. Sundial Growers up 7%. Uh, RKD, that's like Roku or... Oh, no, it's Rocket Companies? I don't know what that is. They're up 10%. TV streaming is FUBU. S I R I stock is Sirius XM. Oh, is Sirius XM another one of those big shorts? Mm, yeah, oh man, they were up big at the morning, but now it's only about 5%. Oh, Kodak is Kodak? K O D K stock. Oh, they're up 35% today. Oh, that's that's freaking hilarious. I don't want to touch that one. After that, after that whole thing that happened, and American Airlines is up. Well. Interesting. You said in early in the stream that a rise like Blackberry had is, but no, I didn't. I think you misunderstood me. Um Here's the thing, I wouldn't I wouldn't be trying to play any of them crashing, to be honest. It's just not the the right play. Like <clears throat> how, how do I put this? Oh, you know while we're doing this, let's uh, let's pull up the YouTube. Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve. Cool. And just mute them like that. The remote. Okay. Anyways. So something that you have to really keep in mind is that, especially with stocks, there is very much an attention effect. I mean, it's the same thing with the futures, but the way that they do it in futures is, you know, they'll pop a big order out there or whatever, and it might not even actually mean anything, but they're just trying to get you to do something. And uh, that very much happens in stocks where they really, they just want you to... They, they put certain stocks in front of you, and those are the ones that you're paying attention to. And the ones that, that they're showing to you and that everybody are talking about are not necessarily the ones that you want to be playing. Really, the best ones are going to be the ones that nobody is talking about and then become a big deal later on, right? So right now, everybody's focus is on these shorts. So the play there is to be long. Now, after that, are they going to fall back down? Probably yes, but... It's going to be super hard to take advantage of it because anybody that goes short just becomes more fuel for them to take, right? It just keeps going. So I don't think that you want to short those at all. I think that that is, you know, that it's playing with your attention. I think have your strategy, the things that you want to do. And, my, and right now in this market, the wise thing to do is to find undervalued companies, and here are these, uh, these short covering rallies. That is an example of finding undervalued companies. And it just happens to be that they, they go like way further than they're supposed to. <laughs> supposed to. I mean, then they would base off of fundamentals at least. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, the index certainly moved down here after the FOMC. It doesn't seem quite so awful. But um, oh, let's check here. Uh, what's our Bitcoin? -a? Oh, you know, I don't need that. Um, uh, not that one, this one. Yeah, Bitcoin's up a little bit. Hey, if Bitcoin could move up a little bit, I wouldn't be too, too upset. <laughs> so I can short it. I want to short it so bad. I want to short it so bad, but apparently for me to do this short, it needs to go up a little bit first.
Uh oh. The EU's very existence is under threat. Italy's Conte warned amid COVID row. Apparently, Italy does this all the time to scare the ECB into sending it more euros or to take on some failing bank's debt, says Live Money. Okay. Oh, what is the ace icing? The economic recovery has moderated in recent months. Economic path will significantly depend on progress with vaccinations and COVID-19. Fed reiterated they will use all tools to support the economy. There was nothing interesting in the, the statement. Like, really, it was like a boring statement. Um, that's kind of funny, though, the way that the market is behaving. Is it the squeeze? I don't know. They're a little bit below my exit price. I kind of got an inkling that it could continue going. Maybe it might take a day or two, though. You showed an example of how traders like a gradual rise in the price, so that's not exactly how I would characterize it. So what am I saying is that you should want a gradual rise in the price of the stock. Okay. For you, if you are long in GameStop, what you would like to see is a gradual slow trend. Good or bad? What is good or bad? EXP. Oh, you know what? That one it was interesting to me too because I like to buy close from there. EXPR. Holy shiz it. Huh. Wait, I remember looking at that one the other day and being like, oh, that one looks pretty good. And look at that. 223% overnight. That is a short squeeze. Holy crap. Holy crap. Okay, anyways, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, you, you want a gradual rise because if it rises too fast, it tends, it tends to dump on you. Right? So if the stock is going like this, then the most likely thing to happen is this. Even if it's still bullish, it could do that, right? Because what happens is the guys that got in here, their their trading goes, you know, they they buy all that they want to buy, and then everybody that's bought is bought in, and then some people will sell, and some there will just be like a short term regime shift, and and it will push it below when they got in because they they like bought in too hard. It creates like a liquidity vacuum underneath, and then you just get sucked down into it right similarly like if you're coming down and and you see this what should you do buy it because you it, you know if it if it really goes down sorry like so like we're getting gradual trend and then all of a sudden it goes goodish you buy that you buy that one because it tends to do that <clears throat> someone should start an etf just for short squeezes at this point oh that is a brilliant ID Lagaruma. Let's do it. Does anybody know how to start an ETF? We can do that. What does a squeeze look like? Well, I mean, it takes more than 30 seconds usually. Um, what we got going in GME, I mean, it's been going on for days, right? But a squeeze tends to look like this. Yep. <laughs> Did you see that? I mean, where did I draw it? Well, I'll make it yellow. That'll be easier. Squeeze tends to look like this. Yep. And it just goes straight up. It goes straight parabolic. 52 viewers, that's more like it. All right. Thank you guys for you guys that came back for FOMC. Should be fun. Oh, I only still got three more minutes. Um... <laughs> A short squeeze is defined as... This, if you buy slash sell it and it kicks your nuts, it's called a squeeze. <laughs> well, I, I guess the, the point of a short squeeze is that it, it, the reason it's moving is because some people have been caught underwater. They took too large of a position and they got stuck, basically. <laughs> hmm. This guy on, on Twitter is saying, oh, holding stocks for GameStop won't make you a millionaire. No, it's not going to make you a millionaire. It'll just make you a 320 in there. <laughs> oh, it's selling. No. 
But I mean, that's maybe that's your uh, you know how way to bar and maybe buy it there. Yeah. A new generation of bag holders. You thought? Have you thought about? I have actually three zero five seven nine zero. Have you thought about uranium mining stops stocks? They're dirt cheap with the new administration and might have solid rewards. There was one of them. I forget which one it was, but there was one of them that was like moving super big. I also have one. Um, it was a company that I follow called Bax. B. I think the ticker is B A X T. Um, and they make the equipment for nuclear power plants. And I'm really interested in that because I really believe strongly in nuclear power. So the FOMC will present the interest for the coming year. So what's what? Let me explain what's going to happen here. Um, the media gets to ask the president of the Federal Reserve questions. So how how about we do this? Let's do a poll. How many questions in do you think it will take before they ask him about the um, GameStop thing? So I don't think it'll be the first question. I'm so I will put we'll put our guesses down in a in a spreadsheet. Well, should we do is a spreadsheet? I'll just use Notepad. Okay, so you tell me, you tell me. I'll put them in here. So Seth, I say six. Okay, Brandon. No, you have to pick one number, Muncho. Pick one number. Pick one number. We'll put you in the spreadsheet. Eric A just says first. Okay. Okay, four. Four. Oops. You don't think they're gonna ask it, Gary? Okay. I mean that's that's a fun bet way way of doing it. Put it in here. Okay, here they're starting. We'll turn the sound on. Let me know if it's too loud. Good afternoon. Fed's Powell says the Fed is strongly committed to achieving a dual mandate. We are strongly committed to achieving the monetary policy goals that Congress has given us, maximum employment and price stability. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have taken forceful actions to provide relief and stability, to ensure that the recovery will be as strong as possible, and to limit lasting damage to the economy. A lot of you guys guessing second. On the FOMC and I kept interest rates near zero and maintained our sizable asset purchases. These measures, along with our strong guidance on interest rates, and will SEC halt it? I don't think so. Not at the moment, but we'll see what happens. To deliver powerful support to the economy until I think at some point they could. Yeah, well, you're up 50k. Well, there you go. And significantly. So then just. Cover if it makes you nervous. A resurgence in recent months in. COVID if you have to ask me, you should probably cover it. <laughs> That's what I always say. <laughs> okay, you say twenty. On economic activity. Right. Following a sharp rebound in economic activity last summer, the pace of the. Oh, it was um, backs. Here, let me make sure I got it. Concentrated. Oh, sectors of the economy economy most adversely affected by the no that's not what it is greater social distancing household spending on services remains low especially in some oh, i didn't like that require people to gather closely including travel and hospitality and household spending on goods has moderated following earlier large gains in contrast, the housing sector has more than fully recovered from the downturn oh maybe it's just banks by low mortgage interest rates Business investment and manufacturing production. I think that that's right. The overall recovery in economic activity since last spring. So I think the ticker was BAX. Stimulus payments and expanded unemployment benefits, which have provided. Waiting for 320 to hedge it. Families and individuals. <clears throat> the recently enacted Coronavirus Response and Relief Act will provide additional. Pull them back up here. See, this is the thing that drives me. And we've talked about this before, but. But Powell, what's with the tie here? You see this right here? As with it's like crooked. You know why it's crooked? It's because you're tying a single Windsor. It's because you're tying a single Windsor. You see how that? You get this little tiny nod, and it's kind of crooked. Losses in industries where the resurgence of the virus has weighed further on activity. 
In particular, the leisure and hospitality sector lost nearly half a million jobs, largely from restaurants and bars. And maybe I've got the wrong one. It's like BAX something. 6.7% in December, and participation in the labor market is notably below pre-pandemic levels. Although there is I have to remember it being a three symbol one BAX. Of Americans remain out of work. The economic downturn has not fallen equally on all Americans. And those least able to shoulder the burden have been the hardest. No, I think it is ba backs. The high level of joblessness has been especially severe for lower wage workers in the service sector and for African Americans and Hispanics. Well, they do, they do stuff with health care, too. This location has upended many lives and created great uncertainty about the future. Anyways, I have to look later. That was like my play for nuclear energy, but I couldn't. I didn't decide not to do it. Consumer yeah, it seems like it's weak tie energy, dude. I agree, Orange Ninja. For those sectors that have been most adversely affected by the pandemic, <clears throat> particularly soft. The tie is rough. No, this is the way as tie is every time. Longer run objectives. It's a way like this every time. We should not underestimate the challenges we currently. By the way, did you know? Point did you know that the Federal Reserve has their own flag? It's a BWX. That's right. You're right. It's a BWX. Behind us and return to more normal economic activities. In the meantime, continued observance of social distancing measures and no, no, no. It's BWXT. BWXT. Possible. Yeah, that's it right there. We'll BWX Technologies. That's what I want. As well as limit lasting damage to the economy that could not doing so hot today, are they? <laughs> In addition, hey, what's one year? Last summer. Mm. The economy has proved more resilient than expected. I was thinking about buying it back in like July, so it looks like I was I made the right choice. So it hasn't gone too far, I think, because they were unsure about Biden. Let's change this back to the VIX. Crisis has been guided by our mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people, along with our responsibilities to promote the stability of the. <clears throat> Today, we I'm selling everything, Ty. Oh, we should zoom in here. Policy strategy, as we typically do each January. As we say in that statement, we view maximum employment as a broad-based and inclusive goal. Our ability to achieve maximum employment in the years ahead depends, importantly, on having longer-term inflation expectations well anchored. Make sure Twitter's still up here. As the committee reiterated in today's... Oh, did I run out of... No, we're good. Persistently below 2%, we will aim to achieve inflation moderately. I think that Google has given us more requests. So that inflation um, is 2% over time and longer term inflation expectations. I feel like the market is like way overreacting to the things he's saying. We expect to make <laughs> they didn't move lower though. Monetary policy. He's the president of the Federal Reserve. Are achieved. Oh, guys, come on. How do you not know who he is? It will be appropriate to maintain the current. He's the most important person in the financial market. Sorry, the second most. He's probably he's number two to Elon, isn't he? You're 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 a euro poor. He's on track to moderately exceed two percent for some time. Well, do you know who the president of the ECB is? Holdings of Treasury securities by at least eighty billion dollars per month. That's the president of GameStop. Securities by at least forty billion dollars per month. Until oh, substantial okay. progress has been made toward our maximum employment and price. So they're sticking with 40,000, huh? Increase in our balance sheet Sorry, 40 billion. March has materially eased financial conditions and is providing substantial support. Yeah, Papa Alon is the most important. I think so. It used to be Mario Draghi. I liked him, but it's been replaced with Christine Lacroix. Our forward guidance for the federal funds rate, along with our... Ramp it. I think you buy this man. Stance of monetary policy remains highly. Uh, I hate. I hate. I hate playing the 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 indexes when he's talking. Path of the federal funds. I, I, I really think you buy it. Maybe fifty three would be better, but. Thus, if progress toward our goals were to slow, the guidance would convey our intention to increase policy accommodation through a lower expected path of the federal funds rate and a higher expected path of the balance sheet. Overall, Where's VIX above 28 just as I did you I don't remember you saying that but the economy and will continue it's 30 right now we've also taken actions to more directly support yeah, should have bought it 
deploying our emergency lending powers to 53. a extended extent, enabled in large part by financial backing and support from Congress and the Treasury. Oh, fine. Although the CARES Act facilities are no, are no longer open to new activity, our other facilities remain in place. To conclude, we understand that our actions... To see that, I FOMO'd into it. I FOMO'd into it. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. We are committed to using our full range of bad, tools... Bad, bad Seth. The economy bad boy. ...to ensure that the recovery from this difficult period will be as robust as possible. Thank you. I look forward to your questions. Okay. He's done talking. We've got the players. Hi, Chair Powell. Gina Smiley from the New York Times. Thank you for taking our questions. Um, I was hoping that you would first react to the wild ride that Gabe started. Okay, I'm going to give her set up a, a five. And then second because I think that she looks good and, and her setup in the background is okay, but she's got a really crappy webcam. I mean, they all got crappy webcams, but this is that's a really bad like you need to like clean the lens or, or like do some color correction on it or something. Come on. If you see some sort of large financial stability risk emanating from the non-bank financial sector in the coming months, especially as it relates to search for yield kind of activities, um, you know, what what do you see as the solution there? Thanks. Did she mention him uh, on your first question? Um... Uh, I don't want to comment on a particular uh, company or. Oh, it was it was the first question. Good job. How many of you guys picked one? Yeah, it's just not uh, really something that I would uh, typically comment. Eric Cages said first question. In terms of Eric Cages is the winner. <laughs> as you know, At least she's got hair. That's a good good point. Yeah. <laughs> No, but you don't understand. Under our scoring system, being a part of the, um, and also the uh, be, being bald is is a, is a positive. And uh, and um, it also. Uh, What's my prize? That we, that we I don't know. What what would you like? We could give you something. Use time. Like we can give you a moderator. That's what we'll do. Don't don't abuse it. We think it's a good approach because for us to use ones that are. There you go, Eric Cages. Congratulations. <laughs> successful in every case in picking the exact right time to intervene in markets. So that's for banks. You really asked about non-banks, the non-bank sector. And um, so we monitor financial conditions very broadly. And while we don't... Oh, I wish I could send him a mug. ...over many areas in the non-bank sector. I, I could... I, I, if he sends... If you, if you contact me on Discord... Uh, yeah, if, if you contact me on Discord... Uh, and, and I know who you are. Supervision and then, then, and you give me, you're willing to give me your address. Then I will, get, I will send you a mug. Wait, don't you already have a mug? I think he might already have one. Outsized economic and financial shock. Did she say GameStop? It's a good point. I, I didn't hear it exactly. I was yapping. In uh, carefully So I didn't hear the exact question. I, I think though she was kind of asking about it. So like. He said, oh, I don't want to comment on it. Thank you. James Politi, FT. Financial Times, number two. Uh, thank you so much, Michelle and uh, Chair Powell. Um, I had a question on fiscal policy. Lewis has the mug, yes. You consistently said that the economy needed more fiscal support. And um, I believe... Oh, this is a good question. Does, do, does he still believe that they need more fiscal support? December. Um, we have now. Have oh, she said, "Can you comment on the watch?" So she said, "It's GameStop is specific." Okay. Short-term outlook. I wasn't paying attention. I'm so bad. <laughs> still needs additional support on the fiscal side, um, and in what uh, areas? Thank you. So, I, I guess I'd start by saying that the the fiscal response that we've seen to this downturn has been strong, and I think we can say now that it's been sustained after the passage of the of the. Uh, the le most recent. Why did you long? I was, and that's really a key reason why I thought that they liked what he was saying. Fiscal policy policy has been. Should I try it again? I shouldn't try it there, but I still want to go long. Period. We'll see a strong. I think that they're gonna to retrace this whole thing. Response. I would I would add that we're as I mentioned a long way from a full recovery. Something like nine million people remain unemployed as a consequence of the pandemic. That's as many people as lost their jobs at the peak of the global financial crisis and the Great Recession. <laughs> the under pressure the I'm sorry, John. <laughs> and the path ahead is still pretty uncertain. So all of that said, the judgment on how much to spend and in what way 
is really one for Congress and the administration and not for the Fed. Chasing. And uh, these discussions are going it. on right now. So uh, it, there's a discussion, as you know, right now around around those precise questions, and, and that's appropriate, but not for us to play a role in talking about specific policies. Thank you. Steve Leisman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wonder if I could follow up on Gina's question here. Um, I understand that you uh, do address. But I did stick to it. It just it um, it stopped out. I think it stopped out, didn't it? But there's a range of assets, and I know you do watch a range of assets. But from uh, you know what, it didn't stop out. But in general, to some of I I felt like I got a bad entry. Is why I why I didn't stick with it. Uh, how do you address the concern that so he talks about GameStop too? Asset purchases and zero interest rates. Oh, they're both going to go. Wow, oh, it's so bad. That cause uh, economic fallout should it burst. <clears throat> Let me provide a little context. Uh, <sighs> the shock that, that from the pandemic was unprecedented both in its nature and in its size, and in the amount of unemployment that it created, and in the you see this economic activity. There's nothing. You see this crap. In our modern economic history. Uh, so our response was really to that. And we, we've done what we could first to restore market function uh, and to provide a bit of relief, then to support the recovery. And hopefully we'll be able to do the third thing, which is avoid longer <laughs> You don't think that he's wearing pants? Our role for, assigned by Congress is maximum employment and stable prices and also look after financial stability. So in a world where Almost a year later, we're, st we're still 9 million jobs at least. That's one way of counting. It can actually be counted much higher than that. Uh, so the Federal Reserve doesn't care about what kind of bubbles they create as long as unemployment is good, is improving? 10% if you include people, that's the labor force. Okay. It's very much appropriate that monetary policy be hi highly accommodative to support maximum employment and price stability, which is getting inflation back to 2% and averaging 2% over time. So. On, on matters of financial stability, we have a, a framework. We don't look at one thing or two things. We look and we, and we made that framework public after the financial crisis so that it could be criticized and understood and we could be held accountable. And, you know, the things that we look at are we, we do look at asset prices. We also look at leverage in the banking system. We look at leverage in the non-banking the non system. Which Once he stops talking, we rally and then they halt Jimmy. Well, look, it's turning back up. Look, you could have gotten 300, guys. Across the, that range of of, uh, of readings, they're each different. But we yeah, that's why I'm buying because it sounds like he's saying more money printing. Stability vulnerabilities. Give overall, it to me. Come on. Moderate. Our hit me. Overall goal is to assure that the financial system itself is resilient to um, to shocks of all kinds. That it's strong and resilient, and that includes not just the banks but money market funds. I mean, Jimmy did halt at least once today. Of non-bank uh, financial. Uh, uh, structures as well. They weren't as bad as the ones yesterday, though. When we get to the non-financial sector, um, we don't ha we don't have jurisdiction over that. But uh, so I, I would just say that our um, spread over in GameStop student is getting pretty wide. By the way, to, to setting asset prices. So if you look at where it's really been driving uh, asset prices, really. Oh come on! Thank you. It isn't monetary policy. It's been expectations about vaccines, and it's also financial, po uh, sorry, uh, fiscal policy. Those are, those are the news items that have been driving, uh, uh, driving uh, asset purchases. Uh, sorry, asset values in, in recent months. So I, I know that monetary policy does play a role there, uh, but that's how we look at it. And um, I think, uh, you know, I think that <laughs> Federal Reserve and accountability. Yes, a bunch of people on the internet will will yell at them. That's that's how we hold them accountable. <laughs> driving asset prices at any given time. Can I follow up, uh, Michelle, if you don't mind, um, Mr. Chairman? Do you uh, rule out or see as one of your tools in the toolkit the idea of adjusting monetary policy to address asset values? So, Wait, didn't I? You know, that's, uh, I'm confused. You know, that's uh, that's one of the very difficult questions in all of monetary policy. Oh, because they just we picked one up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Matter. cool, 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 cool. We, we clearly look to macroprudential tools, regulatory tools, supervisory tools, other kinds of tools. Come on. Policy in, uh, in uh, addressing financial stability issues. It's not, you know, the, the, the 
Monetary policy we know strengthens economic being stingy. Creation through so one tick. <laughs> and a strong economy is actually a great supporter of financial stability. That will mean strong, uh, you know, well capitalized institutions and 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 uh, and households uh, will be will be working. And so well, we that one doesn't work out either. And the trade off between the, the sense of it is: would you, if you raise interest, <laughs> and thereby this is why I don't like trading while he's talking. Look, Jimmy is going again. Now, in order to address asset bubbles and things like that, uh, what will that even help? Will will it will it actually cause more damage, or will it help? So I, I think that's unresolved, and I, I I think it's it's something we 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 look should at. be buying into GME. Yes. ruled out, but not something we we we've ever done, and would not something we would plan to do. We would rely on macro prudential and other tools to deal with financial stability issues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael Derby. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I wanted to ask you if there is a near-term rise in inflation related to the recovery. How will you determine whether or not it's something that's temporary? Oh, they can go to the low of the day. How much inflation is the Fed willing? I don't know why they reacted the way they did to that, but to restrain price pressures. Jeez. So, uh, on inflation, um, a couple of things. Uh, there are a couple of things that. Uh, are worth mentioning. One is just that we know that we measure inflation on a 12-month basis, and as we uh, as that's we just going, man. Very low inflation readings of March and April. It looks, by the way, that changing that chain setting and rhythmic fixed fixed uh, the this is just of the tape for me. And, and that's a that's a transient thing that we think will pass. There's also the possibility, indeed, it's in some forecasts that as the economy fully reopens, there'll be a burst of spending and uh, that, that because people will be enthusiastic that the pandemic is over potentially and that that could also create some upward pressure on inflation. Now, again, we would see that as something likely to be transient and not to be very large. In, in both Bruh. cases, see those either lasting or particularly large. So the That's pretty, uh, okay, so this is good. That was a good trade right there. See ...and not react if we see small and what we would review, we would review as- Now I just sit back and relax. ...effects on inflation. Uh, I think if you, you know- And hope that he doesn't say anything too dumb. <laughs> the inflation dynamics that the United States has had now for some decades, and notice that there has been, you know, significant disinflationary pressure for some time, for a couple of decades. Uh, inflation has averaged less than 2% for a quarter of a century. And the inflation dynamics with the flat Phillips curve and low persistence of inflation is very much intact. Those things, they change over time. We understand that inflation dynamics evolve constantly over time, but they don't change rapidly. So we think it's very unlikely that anything we see now would result in, um, you know, uh, troubling inflation. Of course, if we did get sustained inflation at a level that was uncomfortable, we have tools for that. It's far harder to deal with, with l too low inflation. We know what to do with higher inflation, which is, you know, w should the need arise, we, we would have those tools, and it, we don't expect to see that at all. In terms of how much, you know, what we've said is we'd like to see, uh, because inflation has been running persistently. Well, it's getting kind of, it's hanging out down there. It's kind of slowed down. Moderately above 2% for some time. That often means they can go for a little bit more, and then maybe they'll reverse. We'll see. We, we, we use uh, policy rules and formulas in everything we do, consult them constantly, but we don't set policy by them. We don't do that. And so uh, we, we're going to preserve an element of judgment. And um, uh, again, we'll seek inflation moderately above 2% for some time. And we'll, we'll show what that means when we get inflation above 2%. Come on, he's saying the print, the, you know, get the money printers going. Why are you guys so scared? That's what we're planning on doing. That's what we're planning on doing. Come on, buy it, buy this. Hey, Jay Constant, how have you been? Thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Chair Powell, for taking our questions. I have a two-pronged question about vaccines. So, Can you explain how you trade in that program? I click on the blue and red columns. But there is still plenty that we don't know about supply over the coming weeks and months. So Oof, it's so close. Oh, come on, come on, come on, don't do it, don't do it. Uh. For distribution in your forecasts and what that time looks like. And then secondly, I'm wondering if you yourself have been, has been, have been vaccinated uh, along with other FOMC members. Thank you. How bad is the damage? Uh, in terms of- It's pretty bad. Uh, 
the rollout Pretty bad. vaccines. Oh no, actually it's not it's not terrible. We see what everyone else we're, we're, I think we're still safe. We're, we're vaccinating people and at a rate of about a million a day apparently. And let's uh to get um let's size down a little bit though for a bit. are required to get the herd immunity. Get something going. And um we think it's going to be a struggle. Yeah, VIX is up there um, for sure. That we we said that the um, uh, the pandemic still still um, provides considerable downside risks uh, to the economy, and that's one of the reasons why is that is the slowness of the rollout. The other another reason why is just the arrival of these new virus strains. We don't know how to we don't know how to model that. You know, we can have a base case, but we realize. No one knows uh, how the how this new vaccine will roll out, how successful it will be, how high we'll be able to drive uh, vaccine okay. and those sorts of things. So we cancel that because of how fast it came there. We always look at uh, at the range of possibilities. In this case, we particularly look at the downside risks. You know, that's really what we do is we we set policies so that we're we're we're. You know, we're going to remain accommodative until we actually see improvement in the economy and not just uh, in the outlook. Did she ask if he was vaccinated? <laughs> about, about that. Uh, I should ask him that. Also add, there's nothing more important to the economy now than... than then you say no and be like, oh, yeah, I see no, he's so bad. You think about the places... He should resign. Week. I, I mentioned bars and restaurants. That's 400... Yeah, I'm not having... Every, Ninja seems to be doing okay. Because of the spread of the pandemic. Many other areas of the economy, actually, there was actually job creation, in, you know, in goods production and in some service parts industries as well. But we're just not going to be able to get that last group of people back to work. And it's a big group of people <laughs> until we get the pandemic behind us. We, we have not won this yet. We haven't succeeded in doing this yet. And we need to stay focused on it as a country and and get there. And, I, you know, we clearly can, but we're going to have to stay focused. And that includes... You know, that includes Ooh, the Fed monetary policy. Crazy. Um, I, I have been very Everything looks like it's going in slow motion. <laughs> sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you. The market is like way overreacting to the things he's saying. It's pretty, pretty nuts. So I have a question that I was going to ask, but I need to follow up. Ah, it's you've gotten disconnected three times. Does it just Ninja Trader dying on you? You have or you can when do you think about shorting GameStop? Never. Uh, it's a dumb idea, in my opinion. T, and if not, yeah. why not? No, we haven't. We haven't done. Oh, we it. have. Remember, I've already taken the one. On maximum employment, price stability, crap, financial stability as I defined it, the, the broad financial sector, um, and and that that's 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 not you know over over the years we we screwed up. I've screwed up. up looking at right now at all all right uh, my follow-up question is uh, a lot of people in the markets think that you're basically stuck right now because you can't really go lower with the zero bound uh, rejecting negative interest rates and you can't really go higher because of the threat of a taper tantrum is the fed locked into a very narrow corridor now and if not uh, you did say you would signal any change in interest rates a long time ahead but New York Fed President Bill Dudley says there's no way you can avoid a taper tantrum. So how do you do that? Well, first, I, we, we think our policy stance is, is just right. We think it's providing significant support for economic activity and hiring. Hmm. You know, we... we uh, so a new I, would try a, I would try starting a new workspace and we implemented closing everything else and seeing if that fixes it consistent with and based on that new framework in december we did the same for asset purchases so we now have you know strong guidance on 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 rates and on asset purchases that's providing very strong uh, support for economic activity. look at the sectors of the economy that are interest sensitive you will see very strong activity housing durable goods uh automobile sales so you know our our policies are working, and we think that that they are. We think our policy stance is is right. That said, there's clearly more that we can do with asset purchases. For example, we can you know th that's that's a tool we can do more. We, our, we can strengthen our guidance too if we were to think that that were appropriate. We, what you see is an economy where what's holding it back is not the lack of of policy support from the Fed. It's the pandemic. It's the, it's the spread of the disease and 
people's reluctance or, or inability to partake in certain kinds of economic activities, which amount to a, a meaningful part of the economy. So that's um, uh, a decent amount of volume traded there. Things that we can do, but we think we're, we think we're in the right place. You know, in terms of, in terms of um, uh, tapering, it's just premature. We just created the, uh, the guidance. We said we'd want to see substantial further progress. Uh, toward our goals before we uh, uh, modify our, our asset purchase guidance. Uh, it's just too early to be talking about dates, which we should... I think I'm starting to become tunnel visioned. See actual progress. So I'm finding it hard to say anything. We ourselves getting to that point. We'll communicate clearly about it to, to, the, uh, to the public. So nobody will be uh, surprised when the time comes. And we'll do that well in advance of actually considering what will be... <laughs> Well, if I might, um, you just got news that the nephew died of COVID. Oh, my. The question is, can you stop that sucks. Doing it when it's time? Yeah. So, you know, I, I was here. We had all the same questions back in, uh, in in after the global financial crisis. We raised interest rates. We froze the balance sheet size and then we shrank the balance sheet size. So there's no reason why we, we won't be able to do that again. In fact, we learned a lot from that experience uh, and you know, we, we understand as we understood then, but even more so, we understand hmm. the, that the way to do it is to communicate well in advance to, to do predict. Maybe this isn't him. Gradually. And that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to be very transparent. Is, uh, uh, the pace of the tape is, is very persistent. The whole focus on exit is, is premature, if I may say. We're we seeing the treasuries. Oh, well, here's the treasuries closing. Which is to support the economy, to give the economy the support it needs. There are people out there who've lost their jobs. It's essential that we get them back to work as quickly as possible, and we want to do everything we can to do that. That's going to stop out, yeah. Focus right now, it's it, it's uh, it's too soon to be to be worried about that. You know, when it, when we come to exit, we have a we have an understanding of how to do that, and we'll do it very carefully. But in the meantime, our focus is on giving the economy the support it needs. That's kind of interesting order flow, by the way. The way my model is going to. I just wanted to go back to fiscal stimulus for a second. Um, you know, we just had a $900 billion package, and now Congress is talking about doing more. Do you expect uh, more aid directly to consumers to be inflationary? And uh, specifically, how worried should lawmakers be about, you know, causing concerning levels of inflation? I, I would say that, um, again, we have been struggling with disinflationary forces for some time. If you look around the world, look in Western Europe, look at Japan, um, around the world, large economies have, have felt much more downward pressure on inflation, have fallen short of their inflation goals for some time now. That is the broad global macroeconomic context that we all live in. And we believe that those global forces, which are you know, aging demographics, advancing technology, and globalization. Those those forces are still in effect. Now, they may slow down, and, and it's, it's an... So when this happens, my PC's, my CPU's not pegged. I wonder if it's a data issue. Maybe it's just won't send me the data that fast. Inflation dynamics in the United States have, have consisted of a flat Phillips curve and low persistence for, for a long time. We do not expect in the near term that that will change significantly. It may evolve over time, but significant time. You know, th these things, are, these things are, are changing, but they don't change at a rapid rate. And there's, I, I don't believe- I didn't fill, that's so funny. So I wouldn't, I, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm much more worried about falling short of a complete recovery and losing people's c careers and lives that they, that they built because they don't get to work back to work in time and things like that. I, I'm more concerned about that and the damage that will do, not just to their lives, but to the United States economy, to the productive capacity of the economy. I'm more concerned about that than about the possibility, which exists, of, of higher inflation. Uh, frankly, we want hmm. slightly higher inflation, somewhat higher inflation. The kind of troubling inflation that people like me grew up with Seem the argument he is making here is well, kind of interesting to me. In global context that we've been in for some time. He's like, he's like, so what if we get hyperinflation? It's no big deal. Bloomberg. Like, is everybody, let's get everybody employed first, and then you can worry about hyperinflation. Hmm, okay. Yellen 
in a uh, memo to uh, her employees yesterday spoke of the close working relationship. If it happens, I don't think that, that you'll feel the same way when it happens. But you would describe the relationship with, uh, with Treasury under Chair Yellen, and if you've met with... Uh, with uh, if this was live, this... This will now be more of a hands-off uh, attitude in terms of commenting on monetary policy. That's a little better. I'm sorry. I disappeared. I should be there now. Okay, so... I have the high oh, looks like I got filled for Secretary Yellen, uh, and I'm I'm sure that we're going to have a, a good working relationship together. Okay. Really sure. Um, we'll also have a good institutional relationship. Well, am I back? Are we all okay? That'll be very good. Didn't lose anybody. It'll be collaborative. We'll work together. Now, the way that works is is that you know, you know the agencies know each other well and this this is true of finance ministries and central why contribute to unemployment pipeline shutdown yeah authorities we know that we thank you for posting that link when you know for the benefit of the public and i i'm i'm absolutely sure that we're going to do that huh. um i you know haven't i haven't spoken to to uh, secretary yellen i'm going to be calling her chair yellen most of the time so you just have to be patient with me uh, Secretary Yellen, I haven't spoken to her since I congratulated her on being nominated. I do expect very soon to uh, begin our regular calls or, and, and ultimately meetings, uh, which have gone on really for, you know, 70 years. The Treasury Secretary and the, and the Fed Chair have had weekly or so meetings, lunches, breakfasts, calls, depending on the situation. So I expect that will happen. The heck was that? And soon. I've, I have not met the, uh, the president. I need a new CPU, apparently. Um, and just uh, you know, I, I I don't I don't have any comment on your on your last question. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to comment one way or the other. Just to follow up brief, have uh, some 33 <sighs> emergency programs that will expire March 31 that the Fed and the Treasury have worked on together. Do you have an expectation of whether those will be left left come get me then or whether they will be extended? So I, I'll, I'll just say that I think our facilities were very successful in supporting the economy during its darkest moments, and I believe saved, protected uh, the loss of, of millions of jobs. Um, we're going to continue to monitor financial and credit conditions throughout the economy. BlackRock might have made $2.4 billion on GameStop's retail-driven for Really? Emergency lending tools. I don't think it's rhythmic. Now, I've had no discussion. I'm not sure if it's rhythmic. Anybody at Treasury on <clears throat> Because I haven't had any discussions. Uh, Say, I I think that it's my machine. Meetings with the, uh, with the. So I'm kind of wondering if I like turned off Ninja Trader or I switched over the encoder if it would. Those meetings, of course, fix it. Yeah. You know the longstanding practice. So I I think that I'm just trying to do too much. Discussions. Like when I have uh, Fidelity open too, it slows it down a lot. Thank you. See, so watch. Like, let's shut down Fidelity here really quick. Thanks, uh, Chair Powell, for doing this. So uh, a couple questions on timing. In the statement you removed the, uh, regarding the coronavirus, you removed the time reference short and medium term when it comes to the... No, I'm still using 85% CPU. ...considerable risk to the economic outlook. Should we read that as a sort of a, a, a positive change uh, that uh, you, you now see an end, uh, the, sort of the end game of this down the road? Or is it more that you're, you're worried it could last uh, longer than you expect? Uh, and related issue, um, have you given any guidance yet to the Fed staff mm. system on when? I mean, the thing is, is it doesn't look nearly as nice and everything, but it's still working. It's still handling so it. In the like um, on the language. Uh, the, the, the internet problem that I just had, that was the, the cable kind of isn't in there very good, apparently. The vaccine, it's the... So that's probably affecting things more contagious and okay now now that it's caught up it's fine and also just the ongoing third thing of course is the ongoing spread of the virus it's it's in the near term it's not in the medium term we were thinking when we thinking medium i'm using a 1700x scarring and things i definitely think that i could move over to like a 3600 and it would benefit us your second question and as i mentioned in my um in my opening remarks there's good evidence to to support a stronger econ economy in the second half of this year. In fact, if you look at, at, as we do, look at a range of private forecasters, what was their forecast in, in December and what's their forecast now, right across the board, 
much higher forecast for 2021 growth. And that's because of the ongoing rollout of the vaccines and also because of fiscal policy expectations and the reality of of the um, well, you know, if we wanted to test, we could uh, like, we could tr test something here. Let's test something here. That think of that. I will. Base case is a, is a strong close rhythmic for the year. The language says that there's and um, I forget. I will uh, downside risks. Uh, we use the, up the connection thing here, right here. Disconnect. To the economic outlook. So Edit. Considerable risks that risks of the economic outlook. Nonetheless, that is a, that is a more positive outlook. And oh, I guess I don't need to do that. Parse that for you. Um, don't know when we're going to come back to work, and I'm I'm actually in the Eccles building here today, and I don't know when that'll be. Um, I mean, we I can't wait to be working in person again. But you know, we we've been able to work successfully remotely. We really have, and uh, you know, we're not going to push people when they're uncomfortable. Mm, let's see here. What do I got to do? And wait till it's well into my uh, time. And uh, to uh, get back together no. Members. Oh, there we go. I was like, I thought there was a check mark here. Okay. Connect. Hi, uh, Chair Powell. Thank you so much for taking our questions. Uh, the Fed in December eased its restrictions on bank dividend payments and share repurchases. And so I wanted to ask what factors the Fed will be looking at to determine what level banks can pay out in the second quarter and when we can expect such a decision. I'm on baby duty apparently now. We're, we're monitoring that on an ongoing basis, um, continue to, continuing to uh, evaluate our, our restrictions. And we haven't made a decision about whether to continue them in the second quarter or not. Okay, so if I connect directly to Rhythmic, still seems kind of slow. I'm going to shut down Ninja Trader for a bit. Success in uh, vaccination, all of those things will go into our assessment of what the right answer is to that question. Uh, I think we've been careful. About wow, I'm still pegging 90%. Rolling back those restrictions, and, and uh, I'm pleased with where we are. Let's remember that the the banks, the, the banks that are subject to the stress tests have taken very, very large reserves, very large loss reserves, and also increased their capital. They've now, why is it saying that the stream the is using 47 percent? So, um, the banking system has held up well here, and and uh, but you know we're going to be careful about this, um, uh, and, and you know move based on data, and, and all of the data when we make that decision. Okay, well, we're going to try. Option number two. So I'm the, the stream is going to stop for a second. I'll be right back. Con more concerning for you. So on housing. Um, okay. You know, we're, housing is now. Uh, so we're back. The level of the housing activity is at its highest level since before the global financial crisis. In some. Minutes. Now we're using 33% CPU. Housing. Um, some of the uh, the tightness in housing markets, we think, which has led to the the significant price increases this year, we think is is a. <laughs> a lot of pent-up demand in the uk we can only trade crap uh, man i really don't think cfds are a good way to trade yeah if you, i feel you and they're thinking feel your pain i need a bigger house or i need another house and a different house or a second house in some cases so there's, there's a there's a one-time shift in demand that we think will get satisfied also that will call for so it doesn't look to me like it has anything to do with price increases are rhythmic sustained. It seems to me that it is a hundred percent the CPU. You asked, but uh, I don't know. I mean, this does. Can you see things? Does it look okay? Sort of that's a bubble that you're watching. So we we monitor pretty much all of the big financial markets pretty carefully, and you know what's happened in in the corporate debt market, uh, beginning Oops. with the announcement of our corporate credit facility, has been you've seen lenders I got kicked borrowing. kicked myself up there relatively significantly fewer defaults than we, th okay. than we expected. There were a lot of downgrades and some defaults. The Those have really slowed down. And by the way, the same is true okay. for bank loans. Banks are not experiencing the kinds of defaults that, that we all were concerned about in the early months of the pandemic. It's mm -hmm. just so they're having to reverse some of their loss reserves, actually. Um, it, Maybe we should use the money that we made on uh, on GameStop and just buy a new video card to, to get the better encoder. Acute phase of the pandemic, and they've you know they're now at the lower end of their typical range, and we do monitor that. Um, you know, it's it's uh, 
it's not something we can control or operate on directly, but we do we do watch those things. And you know, in a sense, it's good that companies we do and finance themselves during this. Oh, it looks like we did run out of YouTube uh, requests. Uh, keep their employees working, and you know that's a good thing, and that's that's part of highly accommodative financial conditions. You say it's a little blurry. Yeah, it will be a little blurry. Thanks, Chris Rugaber. You should be able to read the numbers if you have it like full screen, but um, the NVIDIA encoder is not quite as sharp. It's not quite as good for numbers and stuff. That's why I was using NVENC. Uh, and that's why you removed some of the language from the statement. Can you talk about what kind of impact you're seeing so far? Um, do you feel that structural impacts have been, how would you characterize those? I know that's been a major concern. You've talked about it at this press conference and other. Where can I watch? What do you mean? Longer term damage well, so I have a GeForce 1060. And if you get like a 1660, it has a dedicated encoder with the newer technology that looks better you know permanent job loss in workers that need to shift industries that kind of thing okay you know the 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 big thing is that the jury's out and this has been a concern since the very so we'll run this way for in a while see if we have issues if, if they become disconnected from the industry or the job where they that they used to work in uh it it can be years or never when they get back into the labor force, particularly for people who are well along in their careers. Uh, the same same kind of scarring for small businesses, which don't have the kind of resources that you need to get through this. So um, we've, we've had a big concern about about both of those. Knight says, have you ever used like tools like Bookmap? I see you like Dom's. Yeah, so NIOD. The book map is definitely would be like uh, the next one. I've never really tried it. I feel like I'm a little bit too invested in the Jigsaw ecosystem to really make a f switch over. Maybe if they give it to me for free or something. But uh, um, plus, I don't like programming in Java as much. Um, but I would say that Bookmap is a good platform. Its DOM isn't quite as nice as the Jigsaw DOM, but it's it's still acceptable. So. That's kind of the, the decider on those two things, I think. It's not easy. I do think Bookmap adds a lot of features that are unnecessary, but that's not a huge deal, right? So that just can never have too many toys. Urgency that we feel and others feel at at you know fully defeating the pandemic, finishing the job, and getting back to a place where it's safe. To have these, in, you know, to you know, to to stay in hotels, to fly on airplanes. Okay, well, we're still getting a really good pace of action here, but I think things look good, and uh, so the, definitely the CPU is is more free. Now we're using 50, 60 percent CPU, whereas we we're using 80, 90 percent before. Uh, and and you know, the way we look at the economy, um, so many people have had. I know. I mean, have some extra cash. We could we could do some stuff with, but. It's clear that they've made it across and their job is okay and their house is okay. And, you know, it's been terribly inconvenient and painful and schools are closed and things like that. But there, there's a bunch of people yet who haven't found that bridge yet. And we're, we're very focused on that. Of course, the other thing is... Maybe wait and we'll get a 30, 60 or something we'll be learning more about when they have them. As we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, for remote, remote locations, we're learning that technology can replace people even more than we. It's thought. expected to release at the end of so February. As we, you know, as we get into this, you know, the phase after even after the economy fully reopens, I think we're still going to need to keep people in mind whose lives have been disrupted because they've lost that the work that they did. And I think um, it would be wise as a country for the longer run productive capacity of the country. If we were to look out for those people and help them find their way back into the Okay, let's turn back on Fidelity and see if they handle that now. Great. If I could ask this quick follow. Um, yesterday, Susan Wright, uh, at domestic policy advisor at the White House, cited a Citigroup study that said closing racial uh, economic gaps uh, could add up to $5 trillion to the U.S. economy over the next five years and 6 million new jobs. Do you agree that uh, racial disparities are currently a drag on the economy? And if so, what can the Fed do proactively to narrow those racial gaps? No, GameStop up to 3046 is not bad. I strongly agree with that. As I look away for just a few seconds. And 
look at employment gaps or unemployment gaps or wage gaps, wealth gaps, homeowning gaps, all of those persistent. Uh, yeah, that looks really nice. For many other factors, you, you will see that they're they're persistent. They're and they're very difficult to explain. Uh, um, and uh, so, it, it's the the reason we talk about inequality and, and racial inequality in particular is that it goes to our job, which is to achieve maximum employment, which which links up with with. We want, we want the potential output of, put of the United States to be as high as it can possibly be. We want, we want an economy where everybody can take part and everybody, everybody can put their labor in and they can share in the prosperity of our great economy. That's what we want. And that's how the U.S. economy can be bigger, stronger, growing faster, is if we can achieve a more, um, a, a broader prosperity. So now in terms of our tools, what, you know, w w of course, that project that I just mentioned is one for the broader society, for the private sector, for fiscal policy. But we have a role to play, and, and that is uh, how we think about the labor market. Principally, when we say that the maximum employment is a... Um, By the way, if you can hear that a static in the background, I have a baby monitor over here. So there is, we're not that's what that's all about. And we never did, really, but we're not going to just look at the headline numbers. We're going to look at different demographic groups including women, minorities, and others. Is AMC going nuts out too? That we've reached maximum employment, which is our statutory goal. It, your screen is very up close and personal compared to the daily view, yeah. If there's lots of pockets. Well, I, I do kind of wonder if, like, GME is really going to pump again, they do it, it, that it does it, but mostly overnight. I mean, the overnight ramps have been much stronger. These issues, you know, we do, we, we, we have such a focus on these issues now that we actually... We, we have a, new, a, a web page. Can you explain how there can be so much aftermarket and pre-market activity? I thought trading would be somewhat limited during these hours. Well, most brokerages have have things set up so that you can trade in the aftermarket. It's just that their liquidity isn't very high. So it's kind of like anybody can trade in the pre-market. It's just maybe not necessarily the best idea. It's something we're strongly committed to. So... Thank you for the last. By the way, so I need to go back. My lady asking me about. Oh, they, I answered his question. Th I forgot to thank you for the five dollars. So I appreciate it. The, uh, we'll use it. We'll put that down in the video card fund. I think I get a thirty sixty. They're going to be releasing a thirty sixty soon. Adaptability of both households and businesses. Are, are there adaptations that? I might be a little delayed. Maybe related to. I was reading old messages though. New ways to do on-site work, in-person, face-to-face work that that uh, the economy has proven tougher than than you expected at the outset of this pandemic. Well, yes. So I think if you go back to the to the beginning, there was a real concern. I mean, just just best thing that could happen to this market right now is he done talking. <laughs> buildings all over the the, the the New York City and all around the world. Not quite sure I understand why it's going down, but maybe it's not have anything to do with the Federal Reserve, you know? Take their terminals with them. And I think there was a real concern that there would be a tremendous loss of functionality just at the time when the financial markets were under historically difficult conditions. And yet, it worked out okay. So I think people, many people in the financial sector are still working with their terminals. Treasuries aren't necessarily going up either, so that's kind of interesting. Some of that's reversing now, but we have definitely... Anyone else think this guy answering questions looks like Tom Hanks? ...from home um, in many, many different... Some, maybe someday Tom Hanks will be in a movie and they'll, he'll play him. <laughs> personal services for many people are not possible, and that's very much something that skews to higher income, higher educated people being able to work from home, and others not so much. Um... So, I think we've learned that. The other thing, though, even conditional on that, when we saw the wave in the South and the West, the wave of cases this summer, um, I think intuitively, having seen what happened in March and April, we expected there to be a significant hit to economic activity. And people kind of just got on with their lives and went and, and dealt with it. And, and it didn't actually, it had a much smaller effect on economic activity than we expected. Then comes the fall wave, which is just so much. Is it going to go? Very, very no. Wave, as, as was very much forecast, people going indoors, the cold weather, all of that. Um, and even there, if you look at, I, I would say, look at the uh, December jobs report. So big job losses 
in you know in that part of the service sector. So I mentioned four hundred thousand bailing in bars and restaurants. It's another hundred thousand in. Well, that whole thing was disappointing. But if you go, you know what? Though I'm just kind of playing for fun. I it's not having an effect. Trading while he's talking never works out. Sentiment indexes on on areas of the economy that are not directly, really directly exposed to the pandemic. They really want to push it down there. They're doing okay. They are. I, I, housing's a great example. You know, the way the way, the way the housing industry worked, that when you buy a house, there was a lot of in-person contact. They managed to in, pretty much immediately go to a more virtual, uh, you know, with all of the technology. They were able to completely avoid that. And the housing market's been really strong, notwithstanding that it's – it's now quite virtual rather than in person. So the, the, there's been a lot of adapting, and um, but you can't adapt, uh, you know, hotels, sporting venues, uh, movie theaters, restaurants, bars. You just um, look at that. You know, those are just gonna, and that's that's again, that's that's millions and millions of people, uh, and so you're just gonna have to defeat the pandemic, which, as I mentioned. You know, we ha we have a plan to do that, but we haven't done it yet, and we need child to stirs the job, and we it's it's within our power to do that as a country this year, and I, I would uh, just urge that, um, and I know people are working hard on that, but that that is really the main thing about the economy, is is getting the pandemic under control, getting everyone vaccinated, getting people wearing masks, and all that. That's the single most important economic growth policy. Come on, that we can have. Thank you. Finally, it's done talking. All right. No, 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 no. We don't want to hear the sound. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So 30 minutes. That was a longer press conference than, than usual, I feel like. I don't know. He was going on and on, and I was like, why? Okay, what are these? These are the most shorted stocks you're sending me, yeah? Highest short interest, yes. I actually, I have that list. Well, this one's a little bit longer of a list than the one. I I mean, I don't know, man. When I was looking through this list before, and I was like, oh, maybe I should play some of these. But then, like, most of these big ones have already kind of gone off. So I, I feel like I understood what was going on in GameStop in this situation. And, and I even think, you know, we could continue to do stuff. I don't know if I would be able to play these other ones. The one that interested me, though, was the iRobot. iRobot was in there. I mean, but that's like way down the list. What is, is this second list as much? Yeah. See, like, really, if we're talking about above 50%, you've only got SunPower, Food. Oh, those ones are the, the high short interest. National Beverage Corp. Like Ward, Pharmaceuticals, Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, and Galactic Holdings, yeah. Bed Bath & Beyond one might be interesting, but... You know, the reason that the GameStop one it was so interesting is because it was over 100%. Um, I'm not in it at the moment. I got out at 320. I have a bid in some options doesn't look like it's going to happen, though. So, I don't know. I can I can just, I can wait it out. I mean, could come back up and I don't have to take it this week. VIX is still high. And frankly, right? What the fuck? Wow. We're done. We're done. Oh, did that not did that not get me out? Okay. Mm -hmm. So did that finally touch the yes it did. Forty thirty nine. So we wanna I still want to buy it. That was funny, that last one, that they never hit the... I don't think they did, did they? Oh, no, maybe they did. I'm not quite sure what happened on that one, then. <laughs> I 
know who you are. I'm not messing with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're done. So I let's see here. How much did that? I mean, I've been taking this morning. I made a hundred. I've been taking these ones since then, kind of separately, but. I've been trying to catch a runner and it hasn't been happening, so that's our problem there. If we were just taking the six, the, you know, the sixteen ticks, we'd actually be like in a really good spot. So I don't know. Oh, it's awfully volatile, though. Seems like kind of a crapshoot for me right now. Is that the baby? Come on. I mean, if we were going to get in one of these big ones, like, uh, I don't know, all of the big short one interest ones, I feel like already went up a lot today. So I don't know if I could really buy any of them today. Yeah, that's him, but he's just making noises in his sleep. I'm going to go check on him, all right? I'll be right back. Ah, uh, we're back. Oh, let's turn this off. It's the largest battle of our... It is. It really is. This is... This thing is just being really wild, right? Like, normally they would recover, and it seems it's turning per persistent. He's getting kind of persistent, Asher. It's really it's a, that that they're not gaining more confidence and base down here. 
It's a little concerning. I think they'll still I I think they'll still pull it out, but this is a little concerning. Yeah, his volume profile today is just so ugly. And look, they get like, they'll get down there, it'll be all slow and everything, and then it'll just kind of burst through again. GME took all the monies. <laughs> well, it's doing okay. I really do have to wonder if there aren't some funds having to sell because of uh, they were too too short. Can I put you in your high chair? He's like, I don't really want to. Let's put you in here, all right? There we go. All right. Well, it, it could exhaust. I mean, it could. I <laughs> I have a really hard time coming out here and see, you know, seeing that the imbalance is still bad and everything. Oof, that was ugly. Did you see how quickly that went? Jeez. And I immediately, I'm like, oh no, I want to buy it here. <laughs> they, might, they might just sell into the close here. And the way that they're trading right now, that has to say, that suggests to me that it has nothing to do with Powell, right? Maybe the Apple earnings are going to be bad? That could be. Need to flip, switch this. <laughs> We're screwed. It's pretty bad, man. Like, this ends up being like a two standard deviation down. This is the first time in a while. Oh, I want that. All right, give me that. This is the first time in a while that we've had like a really hardcore sell off, and I was like clueless. I usually don't do as well when we're selling these days on the E-mini, but um, unless I catch it early. But I usually, when it's really going to sell, I have a pretty good idea that it's going to do that. Jeez. So crazy. Mm. 
And the VIX is going nuts. So 34 now. What about the Bitcoin? Bitcoin up a little bit still. You know, like the funny thing about all of this is that the during all of this, the the treasuries didn't really move. After they they closed, there was the close, and then going into the close, they sold a little bit. But then, like the e is all over the place, and the treasury's just kind of sitting there. And even the dollar, well, the dollar is over ninety spot six, so I think that that's important to note. But the the dollar's not doing anything too crazy either. Okay, the market imbalance, market on close imbalances to the sell side right now, apparently. <laughs> mm, did they finally save it there? <laughs> I just read a headline about that was funny. I won't read it to you. <coughs> I would love to bring more soldiers to the fight, but my marketplace is not generating enough. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, you're right. The, the treasuries did move up earlier in the morning. I'm just talking about this most recent run since Powell has been sp was started speaking. Like they moved like what? One, two, three, four, five, six ticks. Because it wasn't a bad move or anything, but. I guess I might think differently about it if I still had the prices up here I hadn't restarted and all that. Why do you think GME has been moving so much after hours compared to during the open market? Because there's a lot more interest in it. Um, also, if if you really want to try and push the price somewhere, it's going to be easier to do it when there is no liquidity. Which means either you do it in the overnight. Now, there's a limit to how much you can move it, but... Clearly, they can move it quite a bit before it actually will snap back on them, so. And Wells Fargo won the FOMC. In our view, the FOMC is more likely to provide too much accommodation in the coming months than too little. I guess it's not going to rally a bit into the close. It sure, it sure is having trouble that they're doing it, isn't it? I don't know they're close, but... There was there was a, a good little win there. I think they were probably need to get over this major pivot here at uh, thirty five though first. Okay, it's good. It's good. I mean, maybe we will get a little bit of a recovery, but it may might not be like as significant as we want. Be, 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 be. Yeah, yeah. Happy boy. <laughs> like guys, I could see a couple of lungs giving up on it up there. <laughs> you figured out how to turn it on. How'd you do that? 
It's strange because the market is positive, but the but yo, you're right. It is a good point, man. But that's where I'm saying that, like, it, 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 I don't know, like uh, everything that I'm seeing here. So so well, let me let me show it to you this way. My model for where people's positions are. Look at it. They rode the the seller's cost basis, and the seller's cost basis moved down with them the whole time, meaning that they were taking profits up in here like the whole time. I've never seen it like that. I've seen it ride the line like on the, the shorts, but look, like they've been making money off. It. Like I don't buyers have been buying market makers have been making money off of that essentially is what it means. How does that work? And it's like any time that they think that that you think that maybe the buyers have finally, you know, dug in well enough and it's going to turn around, then the sellers come in hard hard again. Mm -hmm. Revenge of alcohol. I don't know. I mean, I'm still thinking that this short in GME has caused some structural issues. Is there a long form piece out about what it was like inside Melvin Capital over the past week? I would like to see that. Market sell-off intensifies. Dow falls 700 points. So is it hurting me? My positions? Mm, yeah, it is. Lost most of my gains in sumo, and I'm still losing on GS. That's okay. I'm thinking back because I was just looking, checking Discord, and I saw um, Gary Rich that list that he had gave us of the, the most shorted stocks. And I was still thinking, like on Sunday, I was talking about Bad Bath and Beyond, and I really should have just like came in and bought it on the Monday, and I didn't. I was like, what the heck, Seth? This has been a long week. It's it's it's. Crazy that it's still only Wednesday. Okay, so they, they hit back down hard, and now they're buying it back up. Uh-oh, that's that. You figured out another button. He's he's gotten to where he can push buttons pretty well, and he likes doing it. So I got out shock roulette, and, and he's pushing the button on the shock roulette, but he didn't actually shock himself with it. Okay, well, I made it all back. I made it all back. See, this this thing that, that's going on here is like, I just get stuck to wanting to go against the, the direction. And I feel like that it's more than just like, oh, I think for fundamental reasons it should still go up or something or even it's it's like there's something about the way that I've gotten into some habit or some read where I just it, no matter what it does it looks like a long to me you know I think we should do something about that
Okay, we got the MLC report coming up here. You can see those little OTC trades coming through on uh, GameStop. Thirty seconds. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, you mean you don't be, don't be playing me like that. Come on. Suck. 513 to the sell side. So they bought that up. Wait, what? Valve released the new Overwatch before Blizzard did? Oh, apparently it's their new reporting system. <laughs> Oh no! Now, now they're they're saying something different. Now they're saying it was 1.7 billion sell side. That's insane. 1.7. I think that's on par with the largest imbalance I've ever seen. Where's all your toys that have little buttons on them that you never play with? <laughs> Well, I would like to see them break that uh, ATR stop, but... <laughs> okay, are you coming back up? Come on. Why you gotta be like this, brah? Is there a better way to backtest the strategy than in Ninja Trader? There might be. I bet you probably there is. But I really like doing it in Ninja Trader personally. Closing above 300 is actually more than I would have expected for today for GameStop, yeah? I, well, you know, I, I have to say, we opened way higher than I thought, that's for sure. 
way higher than I thought. Well, if we follow the, the, the pattern, we'll open up at 700 tomorrow, right? <laughs> okay, so I finally got out of that. Mm -mm. Bitcoin's moving up. <laughs> Where's my... The one that I want that I've been... Ah, oh, yeah, MSTR. Well, MSTR seems to be following the broader market, but if we could get them back up to like 600. Opening at 700, okay, I could live. All right, it's, I mean, it, the whole thing is just, who knows? It's, it's beyond anybody's ability to predict, I think. Would you like that back? Okay, I get it. I, I, let me, hold on, I'll get it. There you go. Five more minutes. Okay. Cool. He's like, all right. Yeah, it could open up at 22. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> now, I think that 20 would be a little excessive, but they could fall overnight. I'm sure that today we will get more headlines. Uh, and a story like this, there, there's a lot of interest in it. And you will continue to see a lot of news stories come out. Or we will have so much to talk about. And then when that stops, that's when you got to be concerned. <laughs> that's when like the interest dies out and it, you know, the trade is over. <sighs> With it a lot to get oh there you go. Ugh. Wow, hedge fund Mapleine loses about thirty three percent on short bets this month. Who tweets zero hedge. Uh, being oh being reported by Bloomberg. Being reported by Bloomberg. I should have held on to that, huh? Nah, I got to 200 and I was like, well, I think we're done. <laughs> I think we're done. This kind of seems a little bit more reasonable, though. I kind of felt like that that drop below 30, 37.40 or so was unjustified. My mother called me today. She wants to know what's going on there. Oh, on in GameStop. Listen, I'm telling you, like your your parents are gonna be. Everybody's gonna be in on it. Everybody's gonna be in on it, and then it's gonna drop hard as a rock. They're gonna squeeze everybody out. You're gonna have all the retail investors in it, and they'll all be called. Your parents aren't surprised, I told them. Yeah, my, mine too. I mean, we were talking about it on Sunday. I was talking about it on Sunday, and I was all excited. I didn't expect it to blow. I was just like, on Monday, I came in, and I was like, all right, you know what? Like, the GameStop thing, this, I'm interested in this. I put it in. I put it in the game, the title, and all of a sudden, they have 500 viewers, and I'm like, what the heck? But it's kind of funny. Don't you think it's it's interesting how search affects things? Like, when there's when the people are searching for it, we get 500 viewers. If we don't, it goes back down. I guess normally for FOMC, we would have more like 30, but still. I bet you that if I don't put it in the title tomorrow, that we have an average number of viewers. We did get a few subscribers from it, but not a, not as many as I would have hoped. Let's go back and look at that. And that baby, he's making happy noises. He is in a he just woke up so he is in a good mood. <laughs> Patrick Boyle finally made a video about the GameStop move too. That's funny. 
Need to make it. I feel like that there'd be too much competition. Probably the reason that we didn't get as many viewers from it today wasn't that less people were interested in it so much as it was that everybody else was picking up on it and there was more search engine competition. Uh, analytics. Woohoo! Your channel views are up 174%. Oh, it's only 174%. Okay. Audience. Boom, 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 boom. Subscribers. We gained 86 subscribers and 129 subscribers on Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's funny that the revenue is actually not, not all that different. Okay, mm -mm. there's the clothes. Whew, there was a lot out there, wasn't there? Look at that. Whoosh. Still. Still doing it. Still doing it. Still going. Still going. Okay, boys. Time to change the baby. Well, now he's good. But we will go outside and we'll find him better toys with better buttons because he is really interested in buttons. Right. Okay, here are Maybelline's holdings. Let's see. Spy ETF, a WM, Logitech. Oh, really? Hold on. Logitech stock. Oh, really? They're a hundred and seven. They really have. They've really risen in the last year. Wow! Oh, oh, but is that they say? Let me come back here. What was it? That's a put. Shares equivalent a million shares short in Logitech as a put. Well, I don't understand that. I would, I mean, that's already something that's like up. Oh, why would they have puts on that? They have puts on AT and T and iRobot. How is iRobot? All right, let's go look at iRobot. Oh, what was the ticker? Hundred and sixty-one. Well, I robot is up, but it's not up like crazy, crazy or anything. Roku, they're short. Roku, they have so many of these. I'm like, what? And they're short Beyond Meat. Well, Beyond Meat is already gone. I don't know if any of those are really. I'm really feeling any of them. Go to bed and wake up 700. Well, see, man. I <laughs> like uh, the volume today actually ended up being less than yesterday. So curious. And where did our stuff over here end up? Oh, uh, I. Okay, well. Maybe I will yet get my chance to go short on the bitcoins. Hmm? Uh, GameStop. Well, if you guys got any ideas, I have to say, like, uh, Gary gave, he had that list and he was like, you should try getting going on some of these other ones. And I think it's a great idea. I'm just, I'm not sure which one to do it. Is it already doing well in the after hours? Let's see. Is it just not letting me pull it up? That's okay. I should get going. I got some work to do. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. In the meantime, stay profitable.